All right, so day 11 of the 21 days property investor course, we're talking about how to buy a property. Now there's a bunch of different ways that you can buy properties, auction, negotiation, tender, you can do private offers, there's, there's a bunch more, but most property transactions in New Zealand, especially in the major centers, are gonna be auctions or negotiations. So that's what we're gonna focus on today. Now the mindset you've gotta have when you're buying a property is to try not fall in love with something emotionally and, and, and trying to, to remember there are other options and that this is not gonna be the last property that's ever for sale. Your mindset has got to be getting rid of FOMO and it's got to be thinking long term with focus. And you're going to be a lot more comfortable waiting and not overpaying if you are doing the homework on properties and you're understanding how much something is actually really worth. What I think has helped push uh, property prices up a lot in the last five or ten years is people haven't really been doing their homework, FOMO has taken over and, and there has been a lot of overpaying for properties and so when you see a market dip it's not necessarily because of economic conditions or uh, because of anything other than it's a correction for people overpaying um, and so we're, we're actually it's called reversion to the mean and it's mostly because of human error. Now, the thing I'm going to start with is I'm going to start with negotiation as a method of, of purchasing property. And when you're going to buy a property through negotiation, what it means is you're going to see the listing, it's going to have a price or like a, an offer price or it's going to say negotiation. And you're going to see all the, the photos, all the information about the property, and there's going to be paperwork. Now, if you want to do well when you're trying to buy a property through negotiation, you want to be thinking about speed. And you want to think about speed two ways. Speed is when there's something has been listed, you want to be really quick. If it's something that meets your criteria and you're happy with it, ideally you want to be making an offer on the first day and you want to be getting that property under contract and, and, and taking it effectively off the market so you've got first dibs. And, and you are able to get discounts to true value if you know what you're doing in that way. But even just paying fair market uh, prices get something on a contract quickly that you can avoid having a deal with competition now on the flip side of that you can actually be quite successful negotiating on properties that have been listed for a really long time if something's been on the market for six to twelve months even three months and they haven't sold that property yet then the speed at which you operate if you're um, if you're saying hey look I'm willing to offer this which is obviously below what they were hoping for um, the mere fact that it's been on the market for a long time people start to get their own FOMO about missing out altogether now with negotiation there's there's two ways high level to go about getting a property under contract uh, using negotiation method now you can spend your weekend going to visit properties working with agents at eight o'clock at night on the phone and, and, and potentially having them come to your house or you're going to their house and you're trying to do everything in person, you're trying to see the property and then you're doing the contract right at the end. Once you've agreed on the price, once you've found out that you're happy and, and everybody's in agreement, then you do the contract. Now, if you're really lucky, that's gonna work well for you the first time. But what is likely to happen is there's going to be 20 or 30 properties you're going to have to do this for to get one to stick and there's going to be a lot of frustration, a lot of time spent and time wasted and, and, and people give up on buying an investment property or even their first home because the process becomes so long and drawn out, there's so many things to do and it feels like you're not getting any momentum. The other way, instead of doing the contract at the end, is to try and get the property under contract before you do your research, before you visit the property, before you commit yourself to spending time and energy and, and, and feeling emotionally connected to the property. You basically ask the property uh, agent for all the paperwork, especially the sale and purchase agreement. You fill in the sale and purchase agreement with the price and the terms that you're comfortable with. Submit that to the agent they either accept it or decline it. Now if they accept it, you've got that property under contract at a price you're happy with, then you go and do your homework. You look up all of the online online resources, you visit the property, uh, you arrange your finance, um, and, and what you're gonna need is you're gonna need a due diligence clause. So due diligence, 
DD that's often, um, especially in a really hot market, not something an agent is going to be wanting to give you. The due diligence clause is basically a legal clause that's inserted to the contract that gives you, the buyer, the ability to say no to that contract over a set period of time, five days, 10 days, 60 days, for any reason. So you want to get the property under contract, the price that you're happy with, and then you can walk away at no cost for any reason and you don't even have to declare it. Now you can talk to your lawyer about a due diligence clause. If you end up working with us, uh, we're happy to make things available. But what that does is it says your time's important. You're not going to visit three or four properties every weekend and stressing about trying to find the right one at the right price and then do the contract. You're protecting your time and you're being super pragmatic about paying the right par uh, price because it's so frustrating property it's you no know, the actual price is never known until it's on the contract so if you go down the pathway of trying to get a property under contract before you go and do all of that time then the first time you do a digital sale and purchase agreement by emails working with an agent it might take you an hour because you're still figuring out your like being comfortable with the clauses, you're figuring out doing digital signatures, you're figuring out you know just that process. But eventually, you'll be able to get a property offer done in 10 minutes, you'll be super slick, just online, just got your signature saved, add the clause, you get the email from the agent, you better send it back super quick, and they're either gonna say yes or no really fast before you spend any emotional or actual time and commitment on, on that property. So. I, I basically wouldn't go visit a property anymore until I've got it under contract or until there's a price agreed. You really got to, if you're competing and you're looking for a good deal, you got to learn how to get a property under contract before you commit yourself um, any time. So traditional method is research first, then contract. Uh, the way actual good investors do it is they get the contract done, um, they get the price and the terms agreed, and then they go in spend time and money and effort on the research and then they decide yes or no um, am i going to do this deal so generally speaking i i stick to negotiation deals only get to build rapport with agent or the vendor i get to control uh, the contractual terms because i like longer settlements i like due diligence clauses i like to have creativity when we are going to the auction you, you have less less control over those types of things. So especially in a market where we're heading in 2022, 23, where the buyer has more power, it's a buyer's market, you can definitely be looking to look uh, to use negotiation a lot more and you can be more creative with your contractual terms and the, the, the length of time that you have for due diligence and settlement. Now, the, the next and probably in, in the, the bigger cities, more popular sales method, especially in a hotter market, is auction. And the thing that you have to remember is all the tricks of the trade and all the secrets you hear about are kind of irrelevant because usually the highest bidder wins. And I say usually, I mean, except when. Except when things happen. And you're going to see a lot more things happen in this market, especially with issues around finance, get this different pen, um, and with with uh, with buyers not having the strength of options that they ha they had in the past. So, if you're in auction and the highest bidder doesn't win, what has happened? Well, the reserve might not have been met. So, unless the auctioneer has said, "Hey, look, this property is on the market; it's for sale; it's going now." Something might have a reserve of 1 million and 50, but the highest bid was 1 million. So that property hasn't sold at the auction. So that highest bidder has the option usually of going to negotiate. And if they can't meet, um, you know, they can't see eye to eye on a deal, that that property's still on the market and it's probably back to negotiation. You're going to want to be quick in that scenario. Now, a failed sale is when somebody's won an auction and then they can't settle because of finance, because pro property has problems, uh, there's there's a bunch of reasons why that sale might not get completed. So you're really going to want to stay in touch with the agent. If something's gone to auction, you've missed out, but you really want it, don't walk away. Now, highest bidder wins at an auction, except when 
because of negotiation prior, uh, a lower offer has got their property under contract. So let's say property that you really like comes onto the market and, and it is an auction sale. Now you can get that property, offer a price with a contract and you can bring that auction forward with the property under contract so you're eliminating other potential buyers. Say there might be a six week marketing cycle for the auction but you do a pre-auction unconditional offer and get that price agreed and that auction gets brought forward to two weeks marketing instead of six weeks it's going to be a lot less buyers and you can even do an offer where you can say cancel the auction I'll offer this for three days say yes or no and then what's going to happen is the buy the sellers are going to get FOMO the sellers might be hearing from the agent hey look if you hold out you can get a little bit more hey let me do a marketing cycle whereas this the seller has an offer from a buyer that is walking away if it's not accepted they might choose to do that deal so don't be afraid if you see an auction listing to do an unconditional pre-auction offer that is super fast and you might be able to dislodge that whole auction process and get that property at the price that you're happy with now remember that work the work required for auctions is going to be a bit more if you're turning up to auction you need to have your finance confirmed you need to have understood all of the consented unconsented work on the property you're going to want to be sure so you can't just turn up and hope unless you're the only bidder and that property has to be sold on that day because there are properties that get sold half a million below their CV or especially under their valuation because the seller is desperate and there's no other buyers. So there are going to be opportunities like that this year and next year and we've already seen some people picking out properties for a steal just doing their own desktop research and bidding and winning those properties way under value at you know without ever have uh, having been been there so this is negotiation and auction both methods are very closely linked because if you are keeping an eye on those listings you can be doing negotiation on auction properties and you just got to remember even if you're not the highest bidder the sale is not finished you still have heaps of opportunity to be there and you've got to be talking to the agents you got to be making sure that they are going to call you first if anything like this happens. So if you've got any questions about how to buy, let us know in the comments and we're happy to share more detail, especially you're going to want to learn about uh, due diligence clause.